Good day, everyone. Today uh, is a special day since we want to make a change. So this TED is about the ideas. And we want to just influence people with our, uh, with our ideas. And today I want to talk about mistakes. It's not a positive word, yeah? It's not a positive thing. Um, actually, we are shy about our mistakes. We are not comfortable sharing our mistakes. We think that those mistakes should be hidden and we don't really know how to deal with them. We have never taught how to deal with mistakes. Never. And today we are in the school and especially it's a sin in the school to make mistake. And today I want to change your mind a little bit. Change your mind saying that mistakes are good. Mistakes are future. And I would even go further with say that Without mistakes, we are, as a human species, cannot live. We will die if we don't do mistakes. I'm not a scientist, but I will try to do a little bit science of it with my perspective. I, I will try to persuade you with this. So, it's me. I can make mistakes. I can make big mistakes. I can really mess with the things. But I would feel myself comfortable if I would say that I'm not alone. You are also doing mistakes. So this is, there is a word saying that if you go to hell, you want friends. So you are with me. You also do the mistakes. And now for you, if you are not comfortable with this, everyone does mistakes. Everyone does mistakes. How are you dealing with the mistakes? In a school, in a university, at home, we have never taught if things go wrong, what we have to do. We are always teached how to do when things are right. And there are different events uh, where we can come across of the mistakes. For example, if you are in the military, one mistake can cost your life, but at the same time, if you are driving the car, you take the wrong turn, and it will take you around two minutes, you are back on the route, okay? So it means that in different areas, you can experience different impacts, different costs per mistake. And why I'm telling this? Because we have to understand the same thing can mean different things in our life. And, and here, I want to go in deep and uh, tell you several stories um, from my life, uh, which gave me this feeling that there is a big difference between what happens and how it's resolved. So, Going back in 2008, I am working as a specialist in a telecom, mobile operator in Azerbaijan. I am a specialist. I'm focused on the pricing. So you remember those scratch cards, uh, the nominals. I was responsible to putting the number of counters within the inside. So one day I was making the order, and I prepared it, and I made a mistake. So in two cards, you remember 50 manat and 100 manats, I put the wrong number. Okay, they are hearing this and saying that, oh my God, he's telling this story. Yeah, I made this mistake, but the things went even wrong because this order was signed by everyone. And two days later, all people in Azerbaijan was enjoying extra counters in those two cards. People were really happy. And I read this information from the, the groups, from the forums that people enjoying this and something was wrong, right? Company was losing money and the people was enjoying time. And when I realized it was so embarrassing for me, I just, I, I felt really bad. I got to my manager and told that, okay, I'm ready to sign a paper. I'm losing probably my job because of this. I will be fired and uh, I'm getting this uh, bad recommendation. But then she said that, no, uh, we have to fix the problem firsthand. And then we will make sure that this is not happening again. I was shocked. And then I realized that I was working in the company which was owned by Swedish subsidiary. So it was a Swedish culture that we have to fix, we have to learn from this. Because before that company, I was working in an in a investment company, uh, state oil fund. And I, I, can, I was thinking that if I did the same error there, it was really, really bad. Because one single number can mean millions of dollars and... You can imagine what can happen to me at that, at that case. This was two cases which I was thinking about 
And fast forward, I'm going to 2011 year. I'm on the project in Nepal. Uh, it's, the capital is Kathmandu. And the thing is that they don't have electricity all the time. So they have a two, three hours of electricity a day. Um, I would say that some people are happy about this. And I was working in telecom there as well on the project. And my friend, was, who was the marketing manager, we were driving in the car in the night. There are, there are no lights. Of course, the outdoor billboards should be light reflective material, should be done from light, right, uh, light reflective material because there is no light. And we saw that some of the outdoors are not reflective. And we called the vendor saying that, hey, we ask you for reflective material. It's not reflective and it's there. What happened? He said that, sir, uh, we, we ran out of the material. That's it. And he said, listen, but we had the contract. He said that, sir, we ran out of the material. So we couldn't explain the guy saying that, hey, things are wrong. We paid you for reflective material, but it's not reflective. There's something wrong. He said, that, sir, it's not my problem. We ran out of the material. And then we realized that the people are very, very relaxed. Even if things go wrong, they can be relaxed. It's, it comes to the point of the culture, meaning that in which culture you live in, the impact, the, the look to the errors, to the mistakes are different. You can call it a different way of the Hakuna Matata, but still people were enjoying. And in 2013, I started working with the startups. And it was a different world for me, and I started talking to entrepreneurs, the founders. And the first time I realized, I remember this case, one founder invited me to his computer and opened the folder. The phone uh, folder's name was Startup Graveyard. Startup Gaber Sanlığı. This was the naming of the, uh, the folder. So he was proudly showing me the failures he has made all the time. It was a long list of the startup which he failed. He was proudly telling that this gone wrong here. And, and there I understand that the mistakes are considered different at the different stages of, the, of the life and of the uh, social environment. And here I want to say that this thing, we have been always teached how to avoid the mistake. We are in the school today, and I believe that teachers try to make you not make mistakes. So the good student is the one who is learning very fast. So with few mistakes, they are getting to the results. But we have never teached officially if the things go wrong, what to do. And that's why we are trying to hide when we do mistakes. We are trying to hide, trying to blame other people, trying to say that it's weather, trying to say that it's because, I don't know, the things was wrong, but it's not us. So there are different things that uh, we are doing with this thing. And now coming to this uh, gentleman, the Edison, most of us know this uh, person because of the light bulb, but he was an uh, inventor all of his life. One of his first inventions was the poll machine. You know, this is a polling station when you vote for politicians and everyone. And he invented, he was a very uh, young entrepreneur. He came to these uh, politicians, say that, hey, I have a device which will help you. They told him, forget this, okay, forget this. And this was the moment when he realized that he will only do the things which market wants. And this is his verse that, he was inventing the batteries. He spent five months, seven days, all the time, and he couldn't do anything. And his, his friends was joking with him, saying that, hey, five months, you are working with this, and there is zero results. And here he says that now I know 10,000 ways how not to make, okay? And just imagine, today we are lacking this experience. We are lacking the experience of failing. We are only teached the right way. You have to do the right thing from the first time. And you know this famous guy, uh, Einstein. Uh, he, he likes to say that you have to make mistakes. If you don't really want to make mistakes, you have to stop new ideas, stop doing new things. Sometimes I talk to the corporates, to the businesses and going and helping them with their processes. And I see that sometimes they are very proud saying that for 20 years we are doing the same thing. They think that it's a moment of pride for them. And I say that 
it's not a moment of pride for you. It's a shame that for 10 years you have been doing the same thing. If you are doing the same thing for 10 years, that means that you are staying in the same place, meaning that you are stepping backwards. And that's why mistakes, we have to know how to deal with mistakes. There is this book I really advise you to, do is, uh, to read this. It really uh, covers uh, the idea how, how to really uh, the failure, the mistakes works. And here the, the thing is about the books at the schools, at the universities, because it's time limited. And it, during a short time of period, we have to teach children so much of the basic of the world, we have to focus on the results, not the experiments how they came. Because one result, for example, the gravity is one fact that we teach. But it's a long story how this fact came to the life. Okay? And even when we talk about the factual things like a gravity, uh, like we agree that the gravity is like this because everyone agreed with this. The science is the rule of majority. So if we accept that uh, the, 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 there are three main colors, is only because everyone accepted it. Or there are no better idea, okay? And that means that whatever we see, whatever look to this, we only see the outcomes, and we are lacking the, the point of experience, lacking point of the mistakes. And here's another point I want to attract your attention. This is about Nobel uh, Prize winners. Two-thirds of them agreed, accepted that their success in their outcomes was because of the randomness, because of their mistakes. So no one intentionally, I would say not no one, but mostly, it's, it's hard to become hero intentionally. I would say like this. If you want to be a hero, you have to just, just try to make mistakes. And here I would like to invite you to a world where uh, there are no mistakes. Why I'm doing this? Because I was graduated from Baku State University and the, the faculty name was Economical Cybernetics. It sounds crazy, it's like robotics and everything, but in the basics it's like math and economics together, married. And what they teach us, they say that if you want to prove something, you have to go to the two extreme cases. And now I'm doing the same thing with you. Let's go to the world where everything is perfect. I know it's hard to imagine that, especially when you are in Azerbaijan, you have to see some sort of the differences. But just imagine that the bus is on time, everything is perfect, nothing is out of the control. That means that people are not experimenting, people are not changing. That means that over a time, we cannot survive because we have a challenges like a climate change, we have a challenges like a food safety. And if we don't do a lot of experiments, we cannot solve them. We are running out of time. And to be that high level of uh, precision, high level of no mistake, doesn't fit to us. Now let's go to another extremum. It's where the world is about everyone makes mistakes. It's a chaos, of course. Obviously, it's not working again. So we have to accept that we have to have some things considered, some things as a fixed, and then there are areas where we can do some sort of the mistakes. Here's a famous world uh, for the Poka Yoke. It's called in Japanese. Uh, it's famous from uh, Lean Six Sigma words, meaning uh, just make things that it's idiot proof. Today we are doing, having a lot of accessories with this Poka Yoke uh, mindset. So just imagine we have a different types of USBs, the plugs are different, and you cannot mess it up because they don't allow us to make mistakes, okay? If we, it's a high building, they make fences because there is a gravity. If there is a USB stick, you shouldn't plug it into the AC because it's not a good idea. So we have to put in our life pokayoke rules to the things that there is, it doesn't worth doing the experiments with. For example, don't plug the USB cable into the electricity. People tried this, some YouTubers do this. It's not a good idea. Or don't try to prove gravity wrong. It's not a good idea. It can kill you, okay? So once we do the pokayoka thing in, in, in the life, uh, what we have to do, then we go to the limiting cost of the mistake. 
we have to understand that there, there should be a limiting cost. This is option call for a financial people who, who knows this. So there is a limited cost per experiment, but there is unlimited potential outcome. There is unlimited potential outcome because nobody knows what is happening in the future. Today, the uh, big IT companies like Amazon, Microsoft, they are, they are doing experiments. Do you think that they know the future? No. Do you think that the uh, Amazon CEO, Jeff Bezos, have a book to read, to learn from someone? To whom he can learn from? He has to experiment to learn what is really working, what's not. And that's why they are doing the experiments and they are doing it with limiting their costs. And here are the some uh, mathematics behind the mistakes I would uh, share with you. This is my subjective views. You can argue with this, but this is my subjective view, the idea I want to share with you. And I have, I'm telling this because my experience, my own experience, the experience from the people around proves this to be right. So one big experiment versus 10 small experiments. 10 small experiments are better off. Do this fast and the fail fast. The second thing, make mistake today, not tomorrow. So if I make mistake today, tomorrow I know how it went off. And this was the point when I was in my 35 years old. So in Azerbaijan, the men live 70 years, something like this. Women live a little bit longer. So, uh, so you understand that you are in the middle of your life. So you think that, hmm, okay, if I learn today, I still have some time to implement, implement those learnings. So we have to be very fast with these mistakes. And now we are going really to the mathematics. Like F function is a function of mistakes, is experience. So next time when you see a person who say that he is very experienced in something, that means that he has made a lot of mistakes. Right? Yes. But um, yeah, the mistakes gives you confidence. Because if you learn from the book, it doesn't give you confidence. But if you make a mistake yourself, you, you know that it is, uh, it's experience. That's why we have to do a lot of uh, mistakes and experience. And, and here comes the experience plus conclusions is learning. So you made the experiences, you had the conclusions, and now you have the learning. Okay? So those are the, some basic maths behind the mistakes. And I will come to this entrepreneurship again to the end, uh, saying that there is a lean Six Sigma and that there is a lean startup thing in our world. So it, it was adopted by the entrepreneurs saying that we have to do things very fast and, uh, and this will help me doing uh, things uh, effectively because entrepreneurs understood this far better than the corporates that they don't know the, the future. That's why they are doing this cycle, build, measure, and learn. It's continuously they are doing, they don't know the future. Believe me, nobody knows the future. Corporates doesn't know the future. Amazon doesn't know the future. Microsoft doesn't know the future. Everyone experiments. That's why the strategy is for five years no more effective. It was effective before the internet because the time was not flowing fast. No strategies, plans are not working. Now it's time for experiments. And here is the agile thing. Actually, it's basically the same thing as a lean, but the corporates, they like to make, name the things like a fancy way, so they called it agile. And, and here what they say, it says the same thing. It says, do the things incrementally small steps and do it a lot. And then you can find a way to get to success. Just think about the, uh, Elon Musk. He's uh, famous and he's a, uh, a, a lot of things. He, want, he has an aim to go and to, to just land on Mars, but not on impact. He don't want to die on Mars, but on impact, but he wants to die on Mars living. But before going to Mars, he tries to go cargo ship. Then he is doing the Falcon to travel to the orbit. Now he's planning to that going to the moon. Then there is a, another step, and the last step is to go to the Mars. Why don't we apply the same to us? To have a one grand uh, target and then small step to this thing. So now, 
There is no future without mistakes. And if not now, when you are going to do mistakes. Think about this. Thank you very much. Thank you.